So long. What you do? Well, I wear them to school sometimes. Cause if I, basically, if I sit in the back of the class, I just wear them. It's easy to see. But I have pretty good. Do you have like wearing glasses or do you have like No, I have. They kind of look like uh, plusies. Yeah. Good morning, Prairie Lutheran. Great to see all of you. Welcome to Prairie Lutheran Parking Lot Worship. We are so fortunate, again, because uh, during this pandemic time, I know there's still lot, lots of churches that are still filming exclusively, and people are staying at home watching or up at the cabin. But uh, look at, we are in God's Cathedral, and there's, look at that, there's a wink right up there. The moon is half, um, and uh, it is great to be together outdoors together physically at an appropriate place and um, wearing masks as we are able to. I, I like to take, when I'm tight talking on the mic, my, my sort of the windscreen becomes my mask right here so that people, and I want to give a shout out to everybody who's watching wherever you are in the United States or around the world. We have people um, in Europe and in Asia who tune in to uh, Prairie Lutheran Parking Lot Worship every Sunday and we are blessed for that. I'm also grateful that it is only about 75 degrees. If you were here last week, uh, it was about 90 degrees, and our poor folk who were watching uh, remotely from wherever they were, the camera uh, warmed up, overheated, and the whole service stopped. Uh, I think it was right in the middle of my sermon, so I'll take that as a message right there. It was a, um, uh, a, a gift now that we have this wonderful weather. We have a couple of baptisms this morning, uh, two families that we will be celebrating right here with the font. And we are so blessed because when the pandemic began on March 15 uh, until last month, there were seven families that had children uh, or youth that were awaiting. And now we are doing that on a regular basis. We're just so fortunate and blessed for that. Thanks for, uh, again, once again, being with us on this beautiful July morning in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. And uh, our service is going to continue now as we hear our opening song. As we gather to together, we gather in the word of Christ and uh, God serving as our rock and our protector. So let that unite us this morning as we gather to learn more of God's word. i 
mind is overwhelmed, I will look to you alone. Got my rock, got my rock, got my rock. You will stand when others fall. You are faithful through it all. Got my rock, got my rock, got my rock. In the blessing, in the pain. Through it all, you've never failed me. You are the strength of my heart. You are the strength of my heart. I can rely on you. I can rely on you. When I've struggled to believe, you have not let go of me. Got my rock, got my rock, got my rock. Carried through the darkest storms, you have held me in your arms. Got my rock, got my rock, got my rock. In the blessing, in the pain. Through it all, you've never failed me. You are the strength of my heart. You are the strength of my heart. I can rely on you. I can rely on you. joy of my life. You are the song in the night. There is no one as true. Jesus, I trust in you. Thank you, Jonathan, for sharing that wonderful opening song. So I forgot to uh, offer a wisdom recitation. It's from the prayer of St. Francis. St. Francis writes, O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, not to be understood as to understand, not to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And finally, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Good words to prepare our hearts as we continue our service with a time of confession. As you are able, I invite you to stand and let's together prepare our hearts and hear God's word and confess together. Let us confess. First of all, God, we confess that our attitude has often been poor. Where you have called us to be humble, we have instead been haughty. Where you have called us to serve, we have instead withheld. Where you have called us to love, we have instead shown disdain. Christ Jesus, through your love and compassion, you will inspire every tongue to call you Lord. In that same compassion, forgive us when our failure to love reflects poorly on your gospel. Amen. And let's take a few more moments of personal confession. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our Heavenly Father delights when his children speak to him, especially in words of confession. As a called and ordained pastor of the Church of Christ, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. You may be seated. We are blessed together today to have an opportunity to celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism. And at this time, I'd like to invite the Schwickenberg and the Kakich family to come up and join us here at the baptismal font. This morning's baptism is a very special uh, moment in my own life as well because a number of years ago, RJ and Mackenzie stood at the altar at Prairie Lutheran Church and they were wed here. Uh, and now God has blessed them with twins. And likewise, Paul and Heather Schwichtenberg 
gathered together with their family and friends at the altar inside at Prairie Lutheran Church, and likewise, we're wed here at Prairie Lutheran Church. And so, once again, they're having a time to celebrate uh, in the grace of God here in this community of faith. So, Schwichtenberg and uh, Kakich family, great to have you back again uh, for another celebration of God's goodness and grace. I want to share some words that uh, remind all of us on this day of baptism what the meaning of this sacrament means for each of us. God, who is rich in mercy, gives us a new birth and a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. The power of sin is put to death in this holy flood, and we are raised with Jesus Christ to a new life. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ Jesus and anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit sent out in mission for the life of the world. And I'll ask each family, one after another, these questions. And Schwichtenberg family, whom do you present for holy baptism today? We present Lucas Robert to receive the sacrament of holy baptism. Amen. And Kakich family, whom do you present for holy baptism this morning? Amen. Amen. Parents and sponsors, in Christian love, you have presented these children for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring them to the Lord's house, teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. And as they grow in years, place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for their instruction in the Christian faith. That in living in the covenant of their baptism and communion with the church, they may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Parents and sponsors, do you promise to fill these to fill these obligations? If so, respond, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Amen. At Pray Lutheran Church, we baptize with water that was drawn from the Jordan River in the Holy Land of Israel. And as I pour the water into the font, I ask you to join me. In this, in this prayer. At this font, Holy God, we pray that you would breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here today. Illumine our days, enliven our lives, wash away the sin within us, and drown the evil around us. And may your Holy Spirit be the eternal fountain that brings the birth of the body of Christ, both now and forever, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's start with Lucas and mom or dad, if you want to come on over here. And um, Melanie, our director of children's ministry, and I practice this before the service so that uh, I don't get electrocuted as I'm baptizing the child. That would not be a good thing. We wouldn't want that on the camera either, nor everybody here who's live. I'm going to hand this over. Paul, if you want to put Lucas's head right there. Lucas, get ready. <laughs> Lucas Robert Schwichtenberg, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Lucas Robert, child of God, I mark you with the sign of the cross and seal you with the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Then let's see who's coming first. Addison? All right. Addison Yvonne Kakich, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Addison, I mark you with the cross of Christ, seal with the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Beautiful dress, by the way. An outfit. That, are these uh, that you were baptized in by any chance? No. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. Deacon. Yeah. Come on down, Deacon. Deacon. Ulrich package. I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Deacon, child of God, I mark you with the sign of the cross and seal you with the Holy Spirit now and forever. 
Amen. And then as Melanie lights <clears throat> the lights from the Christ candle and then an individual candle, it symbolizes that this morning, as these children have been baptized, they are now full members of the body of Christ. And they are part of our holy family here at Prairie Lutheran Church and the church that's worldwide. And now they are receiving this light because in all they say and they do, they will be a light of love of Jesus Christ. Um, and I know that <clears throat> any of you who have ever seen or witnessed a child, you know how they have that God-infused ability to bring a smile on our face. And I think that's what God is always doing for us, is helping to bring that smile on the face of another person through our innocence and through our presence of Jesus Christ. You'll notice that each of the children also receive a baptismal napkin. These baptismal napkins that we use at Prairie Lutheran now are, are, writ, are not written, but uh, woven by one of our partner ministries. We have a, a long relationship with the ministries in India and some of the outcast women, some of the uh, widows there have handmade these uh, and out of their love, they have also presented to them. So Prairie Lutheran, let's welcome these new members of the body of Christ with a, a praise offering to God. Families and sponsors, you may return to your seat or your cars or wherever you came from. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, the Kakish family came from close by. The Schwickenbergs have drove in from South Dakota, uh, Sioux Falls. And uh, so it's not, you're, you're never too far to come back to Prairie Lutheran Church. We're grateful to have you and your sponsors, your family, your grandparents, aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters. Our service now continues with the reading of the word of the Lord. Good morning. The reading this morning is from the 44th chapter of Isaiah. This 8th century BC prophet warns the people to turn back to Yahweh and be the people of God who care for the poor and broken in their society. He boldly declares that there is one God who is alive and at work. And we can know this because the things of God continue to occur. As followers of Jesus, we can lean into God's future with hope and confidence. Isaiah 44, verses 1 to 8. But now listen, Jacob, my servant Israel, whom I have chosen. This is what the Lord says. He who made you, who formed you in the womb, and who will help you. Do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. They will spring up like grass in a meadow, like poplar trees by flowing streams. Some will say, I belong to the Lord. Others will call themselves by the name of Jacob. Still others will write on their hands, the Lord's and will take the name Israel. This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let them foretell what will come. Do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God beside me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Good morning. My name is Melanie Weatherin. I'm the Director of Children's Ministry, and I am delighted to share the children's message this morning. I would like to invite any kids that would like to come up or feel comfortable coming up um, and maybe sitting on this curb. If you would like, I would love to see some kiddos. I see Ensley, and I see Liv and Knox and some kiddos there. That's okay if you don't want to come up. So I was thinking of my favorite movie. When I count to three, will you share what is your favorite movie? Ready? 
One, two, three. Pulp Fiction. Oh, Pulp Fiction. Okay, okay. All right. Anyone else have another favorite movie? There we go. Sound of Music. What's your favorite movie? Frozen 2. Frozen 2. Anyone else? Frozen 2. Anyone else want to name a, fr a favorite movie of theirs? Dumb and Dumber. Bride. Dumb and Dumber, Princess Bride. That's a classic. That's a good one. Anyone else? All right. Well, one of my favorite movies is, one of my favorite kids' movies is Toy Story. Raise your hand if you've seen Toy Story. It came out in like 1995. I think there are like 10 or 11 versions of it now, right? Maybe there's Toy Story, Toy Story 4. Oh, there's only four, okay. Toy Story, and you've seen any, the original Toy Story, right? Raise your hand if you've seen the original Toy Story. Yeah, that's kind of the only one I've seen. Um, that is such a great movie. It's one of my favorite movies. Definitely a favorite Pixar movie of mine. Came out in 95, so right around, I was in high school at the time. And it's my favorite movie because it has so many great stories. And my favorite part of Toy Story, it's kind of towards the beginning, it's when Andy, the main, the main kiddo in Toy Story, right, the main character, kind of, um, has a birthday party, and all of the toys are gathering together. They're frantically gathering together to see what it is that Andy's going to open up for his presents at his birthday, right? Do you remember that part at the beginning? Everyone's frantically, all the toys. Because remember, in Toy Story, Toy Story is about um, Andy and all of his toys, and, and the toys come to life right? The toys come to life when Andy's either not in the room or not looking. And these toys are all frantically trying to peek and see what toys Andy's going to get, what new and shiny toys Andy's going to get for his birthday, right? And they want to see what their competition is, right? And the great thing about uh, Toy Story is there's, other, there's two other really uh, important characters. It's Woody, right? What other characters are in Toy Story, kiddos? Buzz, that's a big one. Buzz Lightyear. Anyone else? Ham. 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 Ham's a good one. I really like the potato head. What What was that? Bo Peep. Bo Peep. That's a new character, maybe, right? No, it's not. Sorry. Um, yes, yes. And my favorite part of uh, is Woody. He's my favorite character. And Woody has something. What? Oh, Forky. Forky. Got it. Got it. That's the new one. Woody has something on his the bottom of his feet. Do you, or Andy's name. On the bottom of Woody's feet is Andy's name, right? It says Andy in handwriting. I love that. And these verses from the Bible from Isaiah 44, they reminded me of my favorite Pixar movie, Toy Story, because it says in the verses, in the verses we just heard, that you... You'll have the Lord's name written on your name. Some will say he is God. Some will say he is the Lord. And some will even have their, his name written on their hand. I feel like we all have, I, I wrote Jesus on my hand to help me remember. Some of you saw this when I was meeting with you before church. What do you have on your hand? All of us have the name of Jesus on our, on our hands on our hearts, we can't see it, but we have it on our hearts. And because we, just like Woody, belong to God, right? We belong to Jesus. But friends, when we live in a world, we live in a world that tells us we belong to this and that and our jobs and our, and our families and this and that. And, and we have to remember whose name is written on our hearts and our hands and maybe our feet. We have to remember that we belong to God. We belong to Jesus. And that is a truth both now and to infinity and beyond, right? Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Father God, we praise you this day and we thank you. What a beautiful day you've made. We thank you that we are your children. Father, help us remember that. Help us remember that every day. Help us to, to know that you made us you love us, and you sent your son Jesus to be our very best friend. Help us to remember that your name is written on our hearts, and help us to know that you are always with us. In Jesus' name, all the boys and girls said, amen. amen.
we get a round of applause for Colin and Nolan here this morning running tech and the, um <clears throat> and the umbrella here uh, today. Thank you, Nolan. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has chosen you. Amen. If I can, I'd like to geek out just a little bit about the universe here this morning, or at least just a tiny, tiny speck of the universe. But first, as my voice shatters, an experiment. If you can and are willing, hold your arm in front of you and, and let's give a thumbs up. I was practicing this with the Britons this morning. Yeah, can we get that thumbs up? Again, perfect. My daughter also loves doing this at home, and I've definitely lost her for the rest of the sermon now. She's practicing her thumbs up as she watches at home. But back to your thumb, though. It's about two feet in front of your face, and the nail on your thumb is about one inch by one inch, if you'll let me ballpark. Now, hold your arm up to the sky. Look at your thumb, and imagine how many nighttime objects you might be able to see or that you're blocking out behind your thumb. And this is definitely straight out of Apollo 13 here, but Tom Hanks is just trying to block out the moon, and there it is up there this morning. But we've got a different mission in mind here today. You can, you can put your, your hands down now. So how many objects in the sky do you think could hide behind your thumb? One? Or a million? A million. That's a good guess, sir, Kellen. A hundred? A hundred? Try about 60,000. And it's not just 60,000 stars that we somehow can't see thanks to the brilliant lights here in the cities. No, it's 60,000 galaxies would be hiding behind your thumb. Now that's what's happening in this thing called the Hubble Ultra Deep Field Image. And I would ask you to Google that right now, but then I might lose you too as well. So at some point, look that image up, the Hubble Ultra Deep Field Image. And just a couple notes on the image itself. It was taken back in 2004 by the Hubble Space Telescope, it has about one million seconds of exposure time, and there are 10,000 galaxies in that image. Now, what's mind-blowing is a quick glance at that image might make you think you're just staring at a bunch of, of colorful stars or a photoshopped image of space, because honestly, it does not look real. But every point of light that you see in that image is a galaxy. Wow. Wow, that's right. I find that absolutely... Incredible, because when you look up at the night sky, every single star that you see in the sky at night is within the confines of the Milky Way, within our own galaxy. But the Hubble Ultra Deep Field sees beyond the bounds of our galaxy and into the vastness of space and captures 10,000 galaxies in a chunk of sky about one-tenth the size of the full moon. And so I could stare at that picture all day because it's incredible to look at each galaxy and imagine each of them holding billions of stars and how many of those stars have planets than to imagine the journey that that light has taken. Billions of years of travel across the emptiness of space to reach this blue speck of dust. See, I think that image shouts the glory of God. To know that this one tiny corner of creation holds an immense beauty. And that the light has traveled uh, from those thousands of galaxies, traversed time and space to reach your eyes. To know that those galaxies and stars were crafted and woven together in the same intricate fashion that you were. And to know that that starlight has made the perilous billion year plus journey to reach your eyes. Sure, we can all see light from the distant stars, but your eyes are seeing specific photons of light that no one else in the history of humankind has ever seen or will ever see. See, the universe is infinite, yet intimate. Trillions and trillions and trillions of stars and their light hurtling toward your eyes across billions of light years of travel bursting free from the stars and then traveling across time and space, they land softly and gently on your eyes. That you and you alone get to experience those specific photons from stars and galaxies that populate the universe on a scale that is unimaginable. It's infinite. Get into it. I think that's amazing. And I could go on forever about the universe, but we'll, we'll just leave it at that. And again, look up that image and look up the Wikipedia page uh, for the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, and then you can go on your own rabbit hole adventure on Wikipedia. But I find that image to be a perfect encap encapsulation of who our God is. 
omnipotent, omnipresent, and yet born in a stinky stable to nobodies with strangers as his first visitors. God capable of anything and everything. A God who created a universe we can't even fathom, and also a God who, who holds our hand, journeys by our side, and weeps with us. A God who is boundless and loving, a God in Jesus Christ who has chosen you. I want you to think back to a very specific moment in your life now. When was the very first time you fell in love? When was the very first time you fell in love? Did it happen overnight? Did you have to be convinced? Did it take time? Were you leery? Or was it perfect and magical and all things just, just right for you? Now I'll give a cheeky answer here for myself, and I'm not going to use a person for my answer, but instead I'm going to use a cat. The first animal I ever loved was a barn cat. Now, for a brief period of my childhood, my family lived on a, ho a hobby farm. We had a couple steers and some bunnies and some cats, and as barn cats do, one of them became pregnant and gave birth to quite a sizable litter. And let's just say my parents didn't want nearly a dozen newborn kittens running around the barn, because they would surely then multiply into a herd of cats. So we advertised to friends and neighbors that if they wanted a newborn kitten, they could have one. The problem was I had already fallen in love with one of these kittens. She was small and gray and fluffy, and my second grade self had named her Precious. And now Precious was every kid's dream, and my eight-year-old self knew I'd be able to take care of this two-week-old kitten and buy her food and take care of her and make sure she ate all the mice that were running around the barn and while also trying to save the baby birds uh, from her. But like any good story of heartbreak, it just was not meant to be. Slowly but surely, that new litter of kittens was adopted by families who would be able to love them and take care of them far better than my eight-year-old self could. And one day, a family came to adopt Precious. Now, in my mind, I had chosen Precious. She was my cat, mine to love, mine to have, mine to take care of, my little creature to love. But life doesn't always work out that way. Love doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes we love the wrong person. Sometimes they don't love us back. Sometimes we're just too young and innocent to understand how life works in a cat you became infatuated with over a two-week period, as I mentioned in your sermon you preached 23 years later, and it's, it's okay. I'll be okay. It's going to be fine. But what happens when we're not talking about cats or a newborn litter of cats, and instead we're talking about one another, about people? What happens when those in positions of privilege and power think that they can do the choosing and they decide that you are not worthy? How often does society shame or demean you for simply being you? How often have you been told you're not worthy, not good enough, not smart enough, not thin enough, not pretty enough, not wealthy enough, not tough enough, not manly enough, not gracious enough? How often have you been told you haven't made it? or your ideas are too idealistic, or your dreams for the future are just simply impossible? Or how often is this institution called the church seemingly done everything but be graceful or forgiving and, and loving to you, to you chosen and beloved by God? Because make no mistake, you are chosen and beloved by God, and that is all that matters. That is all that counts. This year marks the 50th anniversary that women have been ordained within the ELCA and its predecessor bodies. And see, for 2,000 years, men chose themselves to be ordained. And for 1,950 years, the, the men within this denomination's history said women weren't chosen to be pastors. And they hid behind jargon like divine law. And it can't be done for fundamental reasons. And that's because Jesus chose 12 male disciples and so women can't possibly be included. Now, if I may, this morning, 
What exactly were those 11 male disciples doing on Easter morning? And then in contrast, what were the women disciples on Easter morning? I rest my case. Because if Christianity had to solely rely on men to exist, it wouldn't have made it past Easter morning before dying out. So thanks be to God that Jesus chose Mary Magdalene to preach the gospel message for the very first time that day. Because there wasn't a man around who had the courage to do it. See, on both women and men, God has poured out God's spirit according to the prophet Joel that we've all been chosen to be messengers of Jesus Christ. We have all been chosen to be loved by Jesus Christ. Hear this text from the prophet Isaiah again this morning. But now listen, Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. This is what the Lord says. He who made you, who formed you in the womb, and who will help you. Do not be afraid, Jacob. My servant Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. Some will say, I belong to the Lord. Still others will write on their hand, the Lord's. This morning, to you who have been rejected, to you who have been left behind, to you whose voice has been silenced, to you who have been told by family or friends in society that they aren't worthy of being loved, to you who have been told that they can never be chosen or loved by God because of who they are. The prophet Isaiah is here this morning to bring the infinite yet intimate word of God to life. That God has chosen you. That you belong to God. Full stop. See, it's a beautiful love story, really. Jesus and you. That before anyone could love you, before your mom even knew you existed, Jesus knew. That before the world could attempt to label your worth or determine whether you deserve to be loved or not, Jesus had already made the first and the final claim on your life. That Jesus chose you. My friends, it's already a, a done deal. That's the beauty of love. That Jesus is smitten and head over heels for you. And why you, you ask? Because you're worth it. And how can you know yesterday, today, and tomorrow that you are worth it? Just take one look at the cross. Jesus only travels to that cross because he really really loves you. Because although Jesus' love is vast enough to cover every single person on this planet, it is infinite enough to see right through you and to fall deeply and madly in love with you precisely because you are you. This day and always, Jesus Christ has chosen you. Amen? Amen. 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 Remember that. Jesus Christ has chosen you. Let's pray. Good and loving God, we give you thanks that you were born as one of us, that you dwelled with one of us, that you died for us, that you rose to new life for us, that you have chosen us. That we have been marked and sealed through and in the power of the Holy Spirit as beloved children of God. Give you thanks that it does not matter what the world labels us or what the world calls us. That it only matters what you call us. And that is that we are a child of God. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. God's love is infinite and intimate. Wow. <laughs> what wonderful words. And this song reflects on that as well. You're the God of this city. 
You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the Lord. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. Our God, there is no one like you, God. The greater things have yet to come, the greater things are still to be done in this city. Still to be done here. You're the Lord of creation, the creator of all things. You're the king above all kings. You are. You're the strength in the weakness. You're the love to the broken. You're the joy in the sadness. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like you, God. Greater things have yet to come. To be done in this city. Where glory shines from hearts alive. With praise for you and love for you in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Thank you, Jonathan. Greater things are yet to come. That means we have an assignment and God is not finished with us. He's moving in us both uh, greatly and intimately as well. Hey, this morning's mission moment, I want to give a shout out to our partner ministry, iPoint. Uh, this uh, coming week was supposed to be our day camp. Every year, uh, iPoint I comes down and they send about five or six of their all-star counselors to work with our sort of the pre-kids who are not yet ready to spend a whole week away from mom and dad up north in Alexandria. 
And so they practice here at Prairie Lutheran Church and uh, they have the best time. But because of the pandemic, uh, I Point has been shuttered for the summer. And so there's no one going on campus up in the Alexandria camps. And, uh, and so they're not sending down counselors here as well. We look forward to next summer where everything hopefully will be opened up again. And the uh, director of I Point, Greg Anderson, many of you know him. Uh, he comes down here once a year. Was he here this, was this year? Yeah, yeah. okay, that's right. This, whenever that was, uh, I think back in February, Greg was down and uh, lifting up uh, Camp Sunday as well. It was great. And he and I, in regular conversation on telephone or on email, uh, lifting each other up, praying for each other in our, in our respective ministries. And uh, Greg wants to give a shout out to, uh, to everybody at Prairie Lutheran to say thank you for all the ministries that we are doing to support them. And likewise, I, I shout out uh, to Greg and to Janet and all the staff up at Alexandria at iPoint uh, for all the amazing stuff that they're doing and even in this time uh, that they continue to do. And then one awesome thing is that Prairie Lutheran is still in connection because we have a bunch of men who are going up there this summer to do some repair work and restoration work for the camp there. We love that space, uh, they love us here and we're just blessed by God to have that amazing uh, partnership with iPoint. Uh, so let's now turn to offering. We, uh, when we were inside and when things were normal, we used to hand these brass plates up and down the aisle and uh, you could put either an envelope in it or cash in it or or maybe if you want to take something out that'd be fine too yeah as you need it help yourself i imagine but we can't do that we're not doing that we haven't done that for about four months now but there are these green buckets that are distributed around the parking lot here if you did bring uh an envelope or some cash feel free to drop it in there and a big shout out to all of you that continue to give electronically uh or through the mail, uh, it's making a huge difference here as well. We are now at a time in which we offer the prayers of the church as you're able. I invite you to stand and let's offer these prayers to God, our Father, and our Son, and the Holy Spirit. Join me now in the time of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come before you this morning with praise and thanksgiving. We praise you for the spectacular and humbling immensity of your creation. And we thank you for breathing your spirit into us individually. All around this beautiful July day, we hear and see the wonders of your creation. We are blessed to be witnesses and guests to your grand designs and plans. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. From old, you sent forth prophets like Isaiah to speak into times in which they lived. And when they did, they spoke, they spoke truth to power and reminded your people that you are a just God. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, who embodied your message and gave his life for our wayward ways. Help us to speak for justice and to right the wrongs beginning with our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, you are the healing presence of Jesus in our midst. As we seek comfort for our beloved and those that we care for, this morning we lift up these people. Willard Deluge, Jared Spanbauer, Stephanie Stiles, Craig Sandness, Barb Grant, Marcia Vermadal's mom, Joan, Ken Clements, Aunt Janet. And here now these additional names that we speak in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we are now in the fourth month of the worldwide pandemic. We continue to lift up the first responders and frontline workers. Thank you for their courage and commitment to help and to heal those afflicted with the COVID-19 virus. Watch over us in our daily lives so that we think of others and their health and not ours alone. Give us patience as we continue with wise physical distancing and healthy habits. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend to you these our prayers Accept them and help us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated, and our service concludes with announcements and a benediction. Thank you so much for joining us here in person and online as well. God's blessings to you the rest of this day and the rest of this week as we enjoy uh, the beauty here of God's creation. And speaking of being outside, we've got an ongoing event and an upcoming event in August that I'd like to uh, promo on Wednesday evenings this month. We've got kickball right here in the parking lot if you'd like to join us uh, for a little kickball and get outside on Wednesday nights. And then in the month of August, we'll be having movie nights here at Prairie Lutheran as well. So stay tuned uh, for the movie nights coming up in August and invite you and your families to stop on by on uh, Wednesday evenings here in July for some kickball. Now this wouldn't be a good Lutheran gathering if we didn't have you sit down and stand up uh, 20 times within 20 seconds. So I'd invite you to stand now to receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. But it won't prosper when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. It's power in the mind. Name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not back in town from any giant. I know how this story ends. I know how this story ends. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the head of me to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and 
you turn it for good Turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good